So the Orbiter trial was designed to test for the first time the efficacy of angioplasty in relieving symptoms of stable angina in a placebo-controlled fashion. What we wanted to know is that clinical benefit that we see in our patients every time we place a stent for stable angina. We want to see how much of that benefit was due to the true therapeutic effect and how much was due to a placebo effect. So we selected patients who'd come to our cath labs via normal clinical care pathways. These patients had single vessel angiographically severe coronary artery disease and stable angina, symptoms of angina. Um, and those patients having had their catheterization procedure and having decided to enrol in the orbiter trial then entered into a six week medical optimization phase in which we um, up titrated and introduced preventative medications and anti-anginal medications and then we brought them back for an exercise test and a dobutamin stress echo um, and a series of questionnaires and then they came in for a randomization procedure and this was the key to orbiter so what happened during that procedure, procedure is that the patients were blinded to their treatment allocation and the way we did this was to ensure that the patients were wearing over-the-air headphones, they were listening to music um, and then once we'd measured IFR and FFR we sedated the patients and randomised them one-to-one -to, -one to a sham versus um, an angioplasty procedure. Coming out of the procedure they were all blinded and they were followed up after a six-week blinded phase by, with repeat of all their um, baseline tests. So surprisingly for all of us, our primary endpoint was um, the difference in change in exercise time between the two groups. And what was most surprising to us is that there was no significant difference between the two groups. Um, but what we did find that was very interesting was that angioplasty certainly improved ischemia. So the blood supply to the heart of these patients did improve, as measured by IFR, FFR and by dobutamin stress echo. But this didn't translate into a significant improvement in their um, in their symptoms or in their exercise time parameters when compared to placebo. Yeah, absolutely. So this study was designed to check to test the placebo um, the, the placebo contribution of angioplasty in stable angina and therefore we selected a select patient group. These patients had single vessel coronary artery disease. Um, they were a group of patients who had, the majority of them had good LV function and they were prepared to take intensive medical therapy. Um, and that doesn't apply to all of our patients um, who come to our cath labs for angioplasty. Most of the angioplasty we do is for acute coronary syndrome patients and for those patients we absolutely know that, that there is a significant benefit to angioplasty in improving mortality. For the one third of patients that remain with stable angina, what we have now is some information that helps us to make an informed consent process and to involve the, the patient in our decision making. So we can offer them two options angioplasty and a potential um, to not take as many tablets um, and to have an improvement in the blood supply to the heart or if they for example in our elderly population who may prefer to take tablets we can tell them that angioplasty on top of their tablets may not give them that much more incremental benefit. What I would encourage, it's been 40 years since we started angioplasty um, and there has never been a placebo controlled trial. These trials are necessary and they have aided the field in many ways and so I would very much encourage placebo controlled trials to become the gold standard for interventional procedures for symptomatic relief in the way that they are for drug treatment.